Uh, there are going to be hundreds of millions of very, very angry young people very shortly when it dawns on them what, what's transpired and what's bearing down on them. That was the one and only Kevin Hester from New Zealand. And I'll play you a, a short clip uh, of myself first, and then I will get back to explaining this, uh, this new graph. Okay. Sometimes it's good to take things down a few hatches and just spit it out. What our differences really are in clear terms. Ice blogger Nevin Curlin thinks Arctic sea ice collapse will be slower than current collapse rates. I've said I simply don't know. I'm not a psychic, so I just can't know whether collapse will be slower or faster. All I do know is that current collapse rate is catastrophic. Maybe we need a stronger word, by the way. How about infernal? At current rate of collapse for volume, we will be out of ice in 2019, in winter, with no daylight for months on end. 2019, I'm not kidding you. That's linear collapse. And of course, the current rate only needs to be the average rate of collapse over the next 30 something months. The final collapse of ice will probably not be linear, but exponential. The infernal consequences of final collapse cause a lot of resistance against doing the math, or even understanding the math done by others. It's like when priests didn't want to look in Galileo's telescope. In fact, someone recently called me Videleo Videlei on an ice blog. Galileo's books were banned, and the Inquisition sentenced him to prison for defending his astronomical ideas. I got banned like he got banned, but here's the thing. In order to do the math, you need to apply an average. They say they do not understand an average. I present winter blue ocean date based on current daily trends, weekly, monthly, quarterly, half yearly, and yearly trends. They say I predict and extrapolate. Maybe you can help me. Obviously, the daily trend is too random, and the dec decadal trend is too static. Which period for loss of average ice should I use in this rapid collapse phase? to get the best answer to when winter ice is gone. Using a linear decline is a conservative and default solution, but we can't know if the coming years will lose ice slower or faster than current trends. I believe we need to know when the ice is lost and the shop closed. Ever since I found out, uh, more or less by coincidence, uh, how close we may be to to losing all the uh, sea ice in the Arctic in summer and winter, I've been fascinated with uh, the task of trying to do the math and uh, and try and present it, pre present that data in a, an understandable manner to you people out there. So this is my latest attempt to do that, and because it's the first time you see this graph, I will try to explain in some detail. So the first thing I've done here is uh, the y-axis is called the uh, year of no ice, and uh, when I say year, that is... Uh, Significant. I'm not talking about a day or a week or a month or a half year. I'm talking about a whole year of no ice. And the ice I'm talking about is uh, sea ice, specifically in the Arctic. <coughs> um, 
So, because all indications, indicators are pointing to the next decade, this y-axis only covers the 2020s, which is also fascinating from a graphing point of view. <laughs> right, so the headline is uh, Winter Blue Ocean Estimated Time of Arrival with Linear 6 to 24 Month Trends. So we're looking at uh, when we will have the Winter Blue Ocean, of course, like 22 or maybe 2025. And uh, the basis for making those uh, projections is uh, the half year, one year, and two year monthly trends or monthly loss, um, half yearly and yearly and two yearly CIS volume losses. And uh, these losses are then just assumed to carry on into the future in a linear fashion, that is to say in a non-exponential fashion. So as I mentioned in the, in the previous clip, we cannot know if, if the uh, collapse will be faster or slower than linear, but in any case linear is uh, some kind of um, default way to, to present it because then at least you have one point where, where it can go faster or slower. So what you also have here is um, the months of this year, January, February, March 2017. So this is uh, how the projection for a winter ice tree is developing as we get more data and as the 24 month average is uh, uh, is changed into into uh, this year extended you know the, the six month uh, average is uh, extended to first of march it's a different six months than it was the start of january that's that's why you get slightly different uh, results and uh, so in uh, at the start of march the uh, the one year the 12 month um, average it gives you the uh, winter ice free in 2025 that is the rate of collapse over the past 12 months now that is to say march 2016 to march 2017 and in brackets you have the the other two the other two um, period uh, basis for for this same uh, plot that is the half year and the two year uh, average so that's about it I should Perhaps add that uh, according to the most famous uh, sea ice blogger on this planet, Nevin Curlin, the uh, arrival of the Winter Blue Ocean event coincides with the, with the loss of industrial civilization. So that means uh, you get no more bacon in the, in the shop, you don't get any food in the shop, you don't get uh, drinking water in the tap, so you have to arrange for yourself in a different manner, find your food or win the lottery or something. Okay, bye!